Okay, so welcome to my uh, kitchen. And I've got a bunch of different objects here. I've already set them up in a quasi um, still life to show you kind of how we start and think about our, the arrangement of our objects in space, okay? So remember, a still life is creating and arranging objects to tell a story. And we wanna create interest. And by doing so, it's not only the objects that we choose, so the different sizes, but also the types that we choose. We might choose to include or exclude objects to tell our story more clearly. But it's also the um, sizes of them and how we actually lay them out. All right, so I'm gonna move these objects to the side so that you can kind of see where I might have started from. Now, of course, I'm at my house, so I have a lot of different objects I could choose from at any given moment. And so I'm asking you to curate or decide, choose um, specific objects to bring into school, okay? Now, you'll notice that I have a couple boxes here. These are just some random boxes. The boxes do not matter at all. They are just there, as you saw, to kind of give us height or levels um, to create some visual interest. And I have a couple different um, fabrics that you can choose from. Now, the fabrics do not really matter in this case because we're not rendering with value and light. We're not really interested in that, this unit. We're just focusing on um, contour line drawing. And so the objects are the most important part. But fabrics can create some interest too. You can add some um, line work of the, of the fabrics into that as well to create movement. All right, so let's take a look at how we do this. So we've got a couple boxes and um, I could take my fabric and I could lay this out and I could place my objects in a row like this. Now, this could be pretty interesting depending on how you're actually photographing this or displaying this in an artwork. So I don't wanna discourage you from trying different compositions. I think it's really interesting to um, try as many different options as possible and then photograph them and then decide later because sometimes what looks cool in the moment might not look as cool once you take a photo and you go, eh, maybe that's not what I really wanted, okay? So you could, absolutely do these in a row. And I've seen artists do things like that. Um, they might even have set up a box, for example, here, and might do pull the fabric across here. So all you're seeing is the object, and it's a nice, clean, minimal space, right? And so this still life, for example, is really about these three pieces. It's not really about a collection necessarily of multiple items and telling this grand story but it's really about the objects themselves and kind of how they work together. All right, so I could also then take these same objects and I could build them not only horizontally in interest, but vertically. So you might see um, my objects that I've chosen already, I have a lot of different types of items, right? They're all baking items. Um, and together they would tell a story about maybe a specific recipe that I'm interested in sharing. But you will notice that they also have um, different shapes that I see. They are made of different materials. Um, some have labels, some don't. And they have varying heights as well, okay? So that creates interest, not just horizontally, so this way, but also vertically. And how we arrange those objects can create some interest. So I'm gonna take these boxes and um, just kind of stack them up into different arrangements to see what might be interesting to me as far as um, composing my objects. So notice that I've got um, the boxes. I'm kind of playing with them in different levels. I'm angling this one. I might have this one straight on and then maybe even kind of pair this one up vertically like this. Oh, there goes my coffee maker. All right. So again, I can choose my black fabric to drape over, or I could use my white fabric. So in this case, I'm just gonna use my black fabric, and you can see it kind of drapes over, and what's nice about that is it just kind of creates a nice backdrop. Now this is what it would look like if I use the white. So again, totally up to you what you wanna choose, and maybe you have a fabric um, that you're really interested in that has a pattern, and that is important. So this would be a good example where if I place my objects, you can see 
folds of the fabric that are being created or um, the lines from the different layers. And that can create interest in your still life too, okay? So it's all about playing and experimenting and seeing what works, okay? We don't just say, oh, that's good enough. We always play and try new things. All right, so I have this vertical um, container that has my little spatulas in it. And some interesting things going on here. I might have a couple um, cake. Maybe I'm making a cake, right? I might add those in there for some interest. Okay. And then I've got my Crisco here. Maybe my Domino. Sugar over here. And again, I'm playing with how that I'm even placing them on an angle, right? So dynamic angles create interest. When we're looking at a still life, we kind of want to look at this triangle where our eyes will enter the photo or enter the frame. And where is it going to go next? I know we've talked about emphasis and focal point, um, but we also want to think about entry points into an artwork. So if I'm taking my items and kind of placing them on angles, that creates a place for your eyes to travel around to different items. And then maybe I put this up here. I don't know. Just thinking this one's kind of tall. Maybe I'd want this something like that. Maybe I put this up here. I don't know. Not super thrilled with this arrangement so far, but I think you can kind of get the idea of how this works, right? So I'm really playing around with my items to see if maybe um, there's a unique way that I could stack them and create interest. Okay. In the next part, I'm going to talk more about how to take the photos so that you actually create um, a lot of different varieties for you to choose from. The, the greatest option for artists is always having a lot of choices to choose from. If we limit ourselves too much, um, then we are kind of stuck with what we have. But when we can create a lot of different options, a lot of variety, take lots of photos, take this apart, rearrange it, take more photos, um, then we actually have a lot to choose from when we go to make our artwork. So again, I might take this down, I might rearrange boxes, maybe I put this up here, maybe I put my sugar here, maybe that's kind of interesting, having those three things there, maybe my um, cups kind of, my measuring cups kind of change direction, maybe something like that. I'm not sure, okay? And the idea is, is that, again, I'm looking at the whole picture and thinking about it. Um, I might also take a lot of these items out. Maybe I only need to focus on a few of the items, right? Okay, so that's like the first part, and then we'll take photos. I'll show you how to do that next.